Namaste, bitches. Tyson De La Cruz here. Thank you so much for rocking with me. Confucius once said, a squirrel who runs up a woman's leg will not find a nut. Hopefully. <laughs> Our next guest helps men win their women back through their attraction and have a shit ton of sex while doing it. Host of the Married Game podcast, Keith Yaki. What's going on, my man? Oh, well, I'm cracking up. That is a great one. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, when he, he hopefully will not find a nut. That is hilarious, man. It's an honor to be on your show, Tyson. I, I love it. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Bro, I, I really appreciate you hopping on. And and uh we had some uh we had some cool banter prior to the show, man. Um man, um having raised over how much did you raise? Like over 40, 40 million bucks and for real Damn estate 60. acquisitions. 60. So having raised over 60 million dollars in real estate for real estate acquisitions and now uh being in men's work and relationship work. Uh, what kind of led you down this path and, and what transpired to, to kind of have you roll in this path? All right. So what's interesting is raising private money and getting a woman attracted to you are damn near the exact same science. It's attracting somebody into doing whether they're investing in your deal or whether they're saying, hey, I want to get my clothes off and have you invest your piece of your body into my body. It's almost the exact same science. And so <clears throat> I was kind of learning <laughs> both at the same time, if I'm being honest, you know, my first wife, we got a divorce and I was, I, I was a virgin when I met her. So uh, when we got a divorce, I went hog wild. I had been doing real estate and I was learning how to raise private money and doing deals and realized that there was usually two, uh, two people. One guy had a lot of time, and a very little money. And there's one person had a lot of money, but very little time. And then that would be a perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich to create deals. And I was the guy with a lot of time, not a lot of money in the beginning. And so to, in, to get people to want to do my deal as opposed to anybody else's deal, very similar science to getting that hot chick that was in the centerfold of uh, Playboy magazine to say, I want to have sex with this dude as opposed to all these other dudes. So I, I, I didn't realize that simultaneously I was learning the exact same thing. And, um, that's what gave me the skill to be able to create married game. But the journey of how we created married game is, um, is uh, I can get into that in a second, but I just want to make sure if there's anything you want to say to any of that, uh, I could go straight. So I want to be able to be a good, be a good podcast guest. And pause too. <laughs> no, I love it, man. I see you have, uh, you have experience with it. It's great. Um, no, that, that's great. That's interesting how you said there's there's similarities to getting people to let you use their money and getting that hot chick to sleep with you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so true because at the end of the day, I don't know if it's, would you consider it sales? Would you consider it well, a conversation? Sales. Yeah. Everything yeah. Sales. Like it, trying to get what you want is a sales thing. You know, somebody doesn't necessarily always trade tender, uh, but they might, trade you know their ass as they say gas grass or ass <laughs> gas for ass, ass. <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely man so yeah how did you transition into uh this relationship and okay and men's work because so, it, it came out of left field for a lot of people uh especially since i was known in the real estate industry i wasn't a celebrity or anything but i had quite a bit of people that came to me and trusted me with their money and with their time and and, and, and educate them on hey how here's how you can go make a bunch of money in real estate but right. <clears throat> but I lost my wife five and a half years ago uh, running that business. And she's basically said, Hey man, you run your business. You come home and talk about your business and you fall asleep on the couch. And that's not what we signed up for. And I've been asking to change, but if, you know, and I'm like, well, I'm doing this for us. She's like, well, I would believe that if you were ever around, but you're not. And wow. yeah. So my wife felt more lonely inside our marriage than she would if she'd been single. And, um, and she resented, resented me for a couple different things. Um, and which we can get into when we talk about my five dials. Cause I think that'll really open up some guys eyes to like, Oh shit, maybe, maybe there is a way to actually scientifically and practically make my marriage that much better. And so uh, she left and it was like the light bulb or the, the light bulb finally went on for me. It's like, dude, you are the problem, Keith. This is your second marriage that you've now thrown in the shitter. And you're the problem. And it was almost as if simultaneously when I realized I was the problem, 
I don't know how much longer after that. In my mind now, I go back. It, it, it seemed like it was almost simultaneous. But there was a time from when I realized, oh, shit, I'm the problem to, well, shit, I'm the solution. This is this is amazing. Like, OK, then that means I can work on me. And what I came to realize when I because I, I hired three coaches, probably like you, if you want to know something and you you want to get from A to Z you know, faster and with less pain, you hire a coach. It's already been down that road to say, Hey, watch out for this pit hole. Hey, watch yep. out. So I hired these three coaches on how to get her back. And I didn't actually believe any of them went through what I went through, but their principles were sound enough that it actually worked. And so I, I just realized, okay, I did get her back. It took me about five or six months. I got her back. And what happened was, all my friends own businesses and some of my friends own really large businesses. And they're like, Hey dude. Uh, and they were there with me while I was crying my eyes out. I'm like, dude, I lost the, the one I love. Like I, I had already had sex with hundreds of women. I knew what it was like. I knew what every vagina in Vegas felt like. I want, I found my connection. I found my ride or die. Like, this is, this is my girl. And so what happened was, when I got her back and we started to really build our relationship and went from the back of the pack relationally to where our friends started going like, man, you guys really get along good, man. Shit. That breakup for you guys was amazing. They would start to be like, Hey, my head of sales just got served divorce papers. You think you could help him get his wife back? I'm like, yeah, of course I can send him over. And I just started privately working in the side. I was still running my real estate business, but all my friends and people started to find out, well, shit, this guy can help you fix your marriage. And I had learned really great game for short-term attraction to getting women to sleep with me. Now I was learning, oh shit, there's actually game inside of marriage that you have to, you have to use long-term attractive techniques to keep this marriage. And I developed a thesis that honeymoon sex is for minor leaguers and soul sex is, is, is gets better with age. And so I started taking these guys through this. Yeah, it's true. I'm living it right now, man. I, 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 you know, I have a top 10 sexual chart, right? Like top 10. And Jesse, I'm like, ooh, every once in a while, I mean, just, man, I mean, a month ago, I'm like, we did it. We fucking, we, we broke the billboard, billboard records. Like this, that was, that was top, top. Like that was it, man. Top, top. Yeah. That was the, that was the banger, man. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like, if, if I they love go, it. what's your best sexual experience you've ever had? And I've had a lot of them. I'm like, Oh, that was a month ago with Jesse in our fucking bedroom. And it was, it was next class. So it was next, next, you know, next class. But here's what happened. I started seeing these guys get all these results. And then I moved to California and shit got real. I met a guy by the name of Garrett J. White and we started surfing every day. And he had already been leading the meds movement for basically damn near a decade and had like 55,000 guys come through. So he was intimately aware with all of these problems that dudes run into. And the main problem, he goes, the main problem is they're not getting laid within their marriage. He goes, as I'm talking with guys not getting sex all the time. And we would surf every day and we just became best friends. We didn't do business for the longest time. And I even told him, I don't give a shit if I ever do business with you. I'm good financially. I don't need any, we don't need to do anything. But he kept like saying like, man, Keith, you, you really got to handle this. And he would go on double dates with my wife and I. And he's like, man, you got a handle on this. And he goes, bro, you should come share, share some of this shit that you know to my group. And let's see how they respond to it. And dude, I went on to two group calls, like in two weeks with his like elite guys. And they were all like, I got, we got to hire this motherfucker. What do we got to, how do, how do we get this information? Like nobody's talking like this guy. And so I took 20 of those dudes. This is the very start of, this is the very start of quote unquote married game was I took 20 of these guys from warrior and about 16 of them got very positive results. And that was like, Oh shit, we really are on to something here. And that was maybe about two years ago. And uh, since then we've had over 250 guys come through the program. I make them a promise. If you do the work and this doesn't work, I don't want your fucking money. And I haven't got a refund request. So I, the shit works and that's why I'm so confident in it, man. So that's how it started. And that's what's happening, man. Man, I love that. I love that backstory, man. Uh, and I love the confidence, you know, and I can tell honestly, like from your, um, your older videos, you know, when you were in real estate and we were talking a little bit about this offline, but you know, I can totally tell that you are in your purpose leading with passion and, I, I would beg to say that it would, it's probably more fruitful, more rewarding, yeah. like the ROI all around energy time, 
and uh, you know, all the things are just probably off the charts with doing this. A hundred percent, dude. You you always dream about doing the thing that you love so much that you honestly would probably do for free. And people are glad to throw very large chunks of money at me to help me solve the problem. That for them, like literally, listen, the guys listening to this uh, episode right here, any one of these dudes is going to be like, if they're in a sexless relationship or they're not, they're not getting the quantity or the quality of sex that they want in their relationship, which there was a recent poll done. That's 85% of dudes, 85% oh, of men are not happy with the quality or the quantity. And a lot of times it's both of the sex that they're getting. And so it's like when I offer this, hey, there's actually a solution to this. You, you do not, you're, A, you're not alone. B, you don't have to stay stuck. And C, there is a guaranteed path and formula for you to get out of this situation. That's why guys are like, well, shit, we haven't heard anybody talk like that. And then I'm just so glad now a couple of years in this, I have a track record with hundreds of dudes. That's not just me. They're like, well, yeah, but you've slept with, you know, porn stars and models and all this stuff. That's not realistic for the normal guy. No, 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 no. I got Mormons, Catholics, fucking Jews, Arabs. I got them all black dudes coming through this program and their relationships are radically changed. So I just feel like we're in that growth right now where it's been amazing. We just get started. I love it. Man, what advice would you give an individual like an entrepreneur that's, you know, focusing on uh, protection, production, uh, and and they're they're not having a solid time in their relationship? What key areas could you give somebody to to kind of break through that cycle? Uh, well, you know what I would love to do then, because I, I have a very specific five dial system. I call it the, the, the way of the provocateur. And the provocateur is a man who provokes his wife to want to be with him, right? So like, you know, I believe everything is based off of attraction. And so the reason why your wife isn't, you know, initiating sex with you, or if she isn't enthusiastically participating in the sex that you guys do have is really one very hard pill of truth to swallow. And it's, she's just not attracted to you. And that doesn't necessarily mean you got to have big biceps and abs and all that. Although that's, uh, you know, stacking the deck in your favor. Yeah. It's, is she leaning in like, Oh, what does he have to say? Or is she spraining her eyeballs? Like, Oh God, here you go. Here, here he goes with his big fucking promises again. Right. And so in that regard, there are, there are some very five, very specific things that I believe every woman is looking at their man and judging and, and, and basically like, looking at him kind of scoring him on these five things that will are the only things I've discovered that actually move the needle forward to getting what you want. And that is for your wife to be attracted to you. And that's what guys want. Like Tyson, let's be honest, guys love sex, but what they love more is they want to be wanted. They want that look yeah. in the woman's eyes to be like, Oh, he's home. My God, that's my man. That's my guy. You know, that's what we really want. So um, I'll, let me get into those five things. Uh, unless yeah. you have a, a question you want to ask me. No, we... let, let, dude, let's, let's dive in, man. Okay, cool. Okay. Now let me, be, let me, let me set the preface here. There's three things that are being told to guys right now that are the most prevalent stuff that's being told right now that guys are being told to fix this and they're absolute total and utter horseshit. And so let me just say that these first three things that you're being told, guys, I tried them too, and they don't work. And that's, I'll say them quickly so that we can get into the five dials. Happy wife, happy life. Just agree with her. Just tell her what she wants. Just, you know, basically be like a passive little bitch. And the answer is that doesn't make a happy wife is a happy wife. Doesn't mean your life's going to be happy. The second thing guys try and do is do more around the house. Right. They're like, uh, you know, more dishes, more diapers, more, more dumpsters, more just clean, be, be, just do shit around the house. That doesn't mean guys have found out shit. I, I can take all the house or chores. I'm still not getting more late. What the hell is going on around here? And then the third one is just buy her gifts, you know, buy her more shit. So that way she'll want to do. And what happens is the energy can the reason why I want to set up with these three is because the energy needs to be right to, for these other five things to actually work. And here's what they are. The energy is this. If any guy's done those things with the energy of, I hope to get sex from her, that has a taker energy to it. 
and nobody likes that. And that's the same way I was talking about, you know, raising private money and this, if you become across a desperate and I'll do anything for you to invest in my deal, the person leans back and goes, why are you so, if this was such a good deal, wouldn't everybody want this? Why, why are you so desperate for my money? What's happening here? And it raises a red flag. Same thing in a marriage. Like, you're just doing this just to get something from me. It reeks of take your energy. And so if anything I say today, yes, guys, I know you're going to want to do these five dials to get better and to get more sex in your relationship. But the real energy needs to be I'm doing these things because that is what a good guy does. And that is now my new standard of who I'm going to become. That's that's everything, Tyson, because. Yeah, it's not that doing the dishes, buying her gifts or, you know, being agreeable. Those aren't the wrong actions. It's just usually the wrong attitude done with those actions that makes a woman go like my wife said, I just feel like a walking vagina. And I'm like, oh, that's not going to work. And they can feel that shit. They can feel uh, it. They can feel it. Like if you're doing something to get sex or doing something, you know, my my lady often calls me out on, you know, some things that I'm actively, you know, changing. Um, which is, you know, sometimes conversations can come off uh, ma- manipulative t- to her. Yeah. Um, and and she calls me out and she's like, hey, you know, this is what you're doing. And I'm like, ah, okay, check that. You know, because if it's coming from a space of like lack or like want, it typically doesn't turn out solid. Yeah. And, and what happens is most guys, if they get rejected – they become pouty little bitches. And, and every guy in here that's been rejected knows what I'm talking about. They're like, dude, that's that's been me. That's been me. Yeah. I, I mean, just yeah. this morning, just this morning uh, my daughter will usually come into our bedroom about like seven and about 6.30, I brought my wife a green drink and I started nuzzling up on her. And, and I'm like, hey, is Joby coming? And she had somebody spend the night. And uh, uh, she's like, I don't know. I'm like, hey, should I lock the door? I'm just having, I'm being fun and flirty. I'm like, should I lock the door? She goes, no, not right now. I'm like, all right, we'll do it later. You know what I mean? So yeah, that sounds good. I wasn't butthurt. I just thought it was fun. Like, would I have loved to, you know, boned up this morning? Sure. Okay, it'll be tonight. Like, it, it's there's it's never rejection. It's always rain check. That's one of the principles that my wife and I have. She's like, it never rejects me. She's like, hey, let's just do a rain check. Right now is not good. I'm not saying no to you. I'm just saying no to you right now. But I'd love to bone later. That's, that's great. Helpful. That that's great, man. You know, because often. You know, I've been in those experiences too, where I feel ultimately rejected for like the entirety of of the relationship, but it's really not even the the rejection of the entirety of the relationship. It's just, yes, I love you. Yes, I care about you. Yes, you're awesome. Just not right now, you know, whatever the situation is. Can you uh, recap on the, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Most guys get rejected so much that they're afraid to ask anymore, initiate. Or when they do get rejected, they don't know if they're ever, they don't know when they're going to get laid next. So their mind goes into panic mode, like something's being taken away from me. And therefore it creates this major resentment and angst between the the husband and the wife. And the wife's like, dude, all you think about is sex, man. All you want is the hole in me. You don't want the whole of me. Like, bro, stop. And then they, the guys become radically desperate and disempowered. So they start pouting and being passive aggressive which doesn't make any woman go, wow, I can't wait to fucking get naked with you. And so it becomes this real downward spiral that they're experiencing, which is why these five dials need to be in place. So Tyson, shall we give them the dials? Dial them up, man. Dial. Okay. Let's get dialed in. Okay. First and foremost, is she's looking at you as a parent, how good of a dad are you? Why? Because dude, biologically in her wiring, you being a dad that can really help raise this kid to become a, a, a winner is important to her. And I was the world's worst dad. My wife said, basically, you were such a bad dad with our first child early on because she left when my daughter was two. Um, she said, you're such a bad dad that I don't even want to have a second kid with you. That's how bad of a dad I was. She didn't want to leave her with me for date or like girls night out because she thought, well, will he really watch her? Is she OK? Well, that that builds up a lot of resentment. And it causes her to lose attraction for me. So I just usually would tell guys, hey, on a scale of one to 10, how good of a dad are you really? A lot of guys mm-hmm. were pretty good on this one, but this is one where I was like the world's worst. And I had already had three other kids that are like 24, 22, and like 20 right now. So 
I'd already been through the dad thing. You'd think I would have learned by then, but I didn't. So that's the first dial. Are you a good parent or does she feel like she's a single parent? My wife felt like a single parent within our marriage. So she lost the traction for me. That's dial number one. Any questions or thoughts or comments on that one? Or should I head to the second one? Uh, no, that what you're saying resonates, man. Yeah, let's roll on to the second one. All right. Second one is the partnering dial. The partnering dial is I kind of consider like the best friend dial. And the best friend dial is can she come and talk with me without me having to try and solve every one of her problems? But I, but she can literally like say, man, I, one of my favorite times of day is being able to talk with Keith because he's going to listen to me. He's going to share in, you know, share, share empathy and sympathy with me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, 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 a rock that I can, you know, he's, my man's a rock that I can lean upon. He's a redwood tree that I, I can't push over and I can dance under the shade of his branches. There's this real like connection outside the bedroom. And I always say the formula for uh, connection inside the bedroom is connection outside the bedroom, like real true deep connection where she is feeling seen and heard and understood. And bro, I was the worst at this. My wife said, I feel more lonely in this marriage with you than, than, than if I was single. And so I was fucking up these two dials. I I would have guys ask you on a scale of one to 10, how good of a partner or best friend are you really to your wife? You look like you were itching to maybe say something, but I don't know if that was just the video glitching or what. No, no. It like, it's, it's true, man. Cause like how, how good of a partner, how good of a friend are you? And that ultimately dictates everything in the relationship, everything in the relationship. It, and it helps destigmatize. Most guys are like their wives, like all you think about, all you want me for is sex. And it's like, no, I, I want to sit around and watch a comedy, especially with you and laugh our ass off. And if we drink something wrong, it comes shitting out of our nose. You know what I mean? Because we're laughing so hard. I want to have soul type. <laughs> on you. you know what I mean? Because that's, that's what you do yeah. when you're dating. Everything's a date, man. I remember our, our second quote unquote date. I wasn't feeling very well. I'm like, hey man, let's, why don't we walk over to the uh, grocery store and get me some Benadryl. Sweet, it's a date. And then we had a great old time. Came back home, probably had sex, just all over her chest and fucking wiped it off and went about our night. You know what I mean? Like everything was amazing back then. And we're saying that that type of sex and intimacy and all that type of stuff, that's for minor leaguers. It gets better than that. And so this is what leads us into the third dial. And the third dial is the producer dial. Being a guy that can actually truly produce resources that make her feel secure, that she like my wife knows no matter what happens, man, if I lost all of our money, if I if something happened, she's like Keith will make it happen. Keith will make it. We we have enough history and confidence in me to be able to produce for our family, to live at the level that we live, um, to be able to do that. And so. A lot of times what guys always become workaholics and a lot of, you know, there's probably a lot of entrepreneurs that watch the show. I'm an entrepreneur, have been since I was 22 uh, and you are as well. And so a lot of times we go, hey, I'm doing this for us, but it's you keep thinking that lie, but nobody else is buying it. And so she's like, yeah, but you're not around. Yeah, but and and if things start to go well, which like for me, you know, I was a workaholic, but then. I kind of lost my ambition. I was just like working to work, but we were doing well. And I was sitting on the couch, popping Chipotle burritos like they were Tic Tacs, gaining weight, getting a dad bod. And and she's like, dude, what happened to the guy that was like really ambitious? What happened to the guy that was like radically like going to take over the world? And now you're just kind of like you, you, you've done it, but you really haven't done anything other than what you think you've done in your mind. And you're losing me. And in fact, I lost her. So it's, a lot like we were moving into our dream home. We had cool cars. We had the cool shit. And she's like, I, didn't, I don't really care about any of this. I, I wanted you and I wanted I wanted us to have an amazing relationship. And so therefore, good on her for standing up for herself. And she's like, fuck this. I'm out. I'm going to go do my own thing. So that producer dial is important because there's a very real thing inside of a woman that says, I want to be a, I want to be with a man who can create resources and create abundance for our life. But guys can obviously take that way overboard. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Breaking Bad. I don't know if you've ever seen Breaking Bad, but doing this for the family. I'm cooking meth. I'm selling meth for the family. 
but intentionally he was ultimately doing it for himself, you know, cause he never shared anything or was around for his family. So what the fuck are you doing it for? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's you know what's doing so it to hang out with Jesse out. Pinkman. And, yeah, exactly. And, it, and if anybody hears deep breaking bad fans, I got to tell you, dude, I watched the second to last episode and the last episode. Those are only two episodes I've ever seen. I had a buddy spent about 30 minutes catching me up. And then we watched the last two episodes. I'm like, well, I did, did Breaking Bad. What a fucking hack that was. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, so, man. Yeah. yeah, man. All right. These next two So we got dials, the producer dial. Yep. These next two ones are where everyone's going to trip and stumble and be like, oh, Keith, why'd you got to say this? But I think what they're going to do is find out that this is where they're going to start to create real hope within their relationship and real hope that they can fix this. So, yes, you're, you got to be a good parent. You got to be a good partner. You got to be a good producer. These are things that a lot of guys can be like, you know what? I'm a seven out of 10, eight out of 10, nine out of 10 on those. Those are pretty regular standard, uh, pretty decent at. But this next one, the player dial, is where a lot of guys stumble and fall. And the player dial is very simple. The player dial is, are you any fun anymore? Does your wife enjoy being around you? I always quote what I believe is the great American poet, Cindy Lauper, when she said, girls just want to have fun. And it's so true, man. I've been with a lot of women. I understand what they think. And they go, I, they, they want to have fun. They want to be in their feminine. And to be in their feminine, which is that fun, flirty, like, dude, flirting with a girl might be the funnest thing on planet Earth. I know having sex with them is amazing, but that flirting back and forth with your wife, that banter back and forth, it's like a, it's like that mental stimulation back and forth with each other is so dang fun for them and for us as men too. And so, uh, yeah, man, we just get real. We just get real with this and be like, you know, hey, are, are you fun anymore? The player dial also represents. Uh, do, do you take care of yourself anymore? Like when I think of a player, you, a lot of people think a one night stand guy. But if you go back even further in high school, there was always that guy that like the girls just loved. And like, dude, what was you know, he could have sex with anyone he wanted. And I'm not talking just about the, the quarterback on the football team. I'm talking there was the guy that just was the player for us. It was Christian Vilty in our, in our world. You know what I mean? And like, dude, that guy. And if you look back now, it's like, he, it's not even that he was that a, a good looking of a guy, but man, did he understand how to play the game and the game is outside of marriage. And I'm just saying to everybody and waking the world up and saying, Hey, no, 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 wait a second. I don't know nobody's talking about this, but there's a game within the marriage and the game within the marriage is how do you leverage long-term attraction? Cause short-term attraction, Hey, the, the greatest lever you could use is I have options. What makes what makes you so valuable that I should spend my time and energy on you? You don't have that tool within your marriage. And so now you have to give them everybody likes TNA. Guys like tits and ass, women like time and attention. And so now it's investing into my wife. I don't sacrifice anything. Everything's an investment into them. And I go, okay, well. A lot of guys go like, I want my wife to want me. And I go, well, are you wantable? I want my wife to just fuck me. Are you fuckable? Like, got to be right, honest right. here. We got to get out of fantasy land and get over here into reality and go, well, you know what I mean? What, what if you were under you? How excited would that be? You know what I mean? So there's, there's, these are, these are the, the when it comes to being a player, <laughs> yeah. you got to be honest. You still there, Tyson? Dude, sometimes I love that, man. Just, yeah. Sometimes yeah. some of the laughs are yeah. delayed. Yeah. I don't know Dude. The... <laughs> like, I'll say a joke and then yeah, it looks like it looks like it looks and then you'll bust up. That's the that's the classic thing about freaking Wi Fi, man. It's classic. <laughs> yeah. It's great. That's so good. That's I have so the good. shittiest Wi Fi at the office. It's great. <laughs> Okay, so here's another here's another thing about the player dial. Unless there's something you want to say, I got a really good analogy. I think guys would really like. No, d dive in, please. All right. So the analogy I always like to say is: imagine you're immediately single right now, and then the hot girl from high school that you always wanted to bang or probably jerked off to, she shows up in your DMs and she's like, "Whoa, looks like life is amazing. We should connect up and catch up." And you're like, "Perfect. It's a date, dude." 
what would you be doing? Would you, bro, you'd be doing your push-ups. You'd be getting the best damn shape of your life. You'd be wearing clothes that fit. You'd be like, out with dad's three times too big sport coat. Fuck that. You wouldn't be wearing your pleated ass dockers and your fucking leather tassel shoes. No way, motherfucker. You got to have your game on. Why? Because you want to get laid. So you'd be planning dates like you going here. You dude, you would be, you would be putting in so much effort. And yet you don't do that for your wife anymore. No wonder she doesn't want to gobble up your fucking ding dong. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Absolutely, man. Yeah, that 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 attraction level is I think is so important to kind of keep that in in the mix, man. You you had said something about, you know, that that player dial and, you know, sparked some some thought in me and I'm like, okay, you know, there's some areas where I can actually amplify the opportunity to be uh, a player in our relationship where we, I can be more flirty. I can be, be more fun. You know, uh, you're right. Like girls just want to have fun, man. Like they, they, I, I, as you're talking, bro, like I'm thinking of, of, of my lady and, and she is in the most joyous state when she is just having fun and we're flirting and I fucking love it. Yeah, bro. It's, it's, it's what relationships were made to become and they don't have to go away. It's, it's just, you know, the guy, why'd the fire go up? Well, you stop throwing logs on it, dumb, dumb. Yeah. And a lot of it is this dating experience. Like people don't understand, like you, if you stop taking yourself, I mean, bro, she's watching kids all day, man. She's stepping on fucking Cheerios and, have sippy cups and PTA. They're trying to teach kids new math. Nobody fucking understands anymore. Like all this. What the fuck is that math about? By the way, jeez. It's about some fucking like... takeover. I bet to make us stupid. You know what I mean? But my yeah. daughter knows the real shit because I don't care about some government teaching her. I'm gonna teach it her myself so she can be a fucking ruthless savage like we are. And here's the bottom line, dude. If you don't play with your wife, if you don't date your wife and take her out of the environment where she's just a mom, she wants to go back out where you met her in the wild, man. Take her back. Take that filly back out into the wild and let her fucking run around the meadow and have a good ass time. Just, just shaking her fucking mane and shaking that tail feather. It makes them excited. My wife and I, I got to tell you a story, man. It's probably my one of my very favorite stories. And I don't know how we're looking on time. So you tell me if, but this story, I, I think will resonate with a lot of guys. You're solid on time. You're good. All right. So I used to do stand-up comedy. And my buddy Gary Gunderson went on tour. He was the headliner. And he's like, hey, and he and I got into comedy about the same time, about five years ago. And uh, he goes, hey, you, uh, you want to go on tour with me? I'm like, Fuck yeah, man, let's do it. So I, I there was five cities of his like 17 city tour. That I said, I'll, I'll do this one, this one, this one, this one. He goes, okay, right on. So we go to, um, we, uh, we go to Vegas and I've got some, uh, classic bits that crush. Cause I performed in Vegas, uh, on the strip, like three or four nights a week for damn near eight months or 10 months. So I got, I got a lot, I had a lot of chops, a lot of comedy in the, in the clubs. Uh, for me. And um, I tried out some new Mary game stuff that I think is pretty clever and got some really good laughs, but this was the first show I was going to try it on. So I get up and I'm talking about how I'm married and, I'm, and, 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 and it was a really good, it was a fun set. It was actually the first set I ever did high on marijuana too, which was also. <laughs> made it special. Yeah. So we, uh, <laughs> I'm done. I crushed my set. My wife knew which new jokes I was working and they, they really landed. And so she was pumped for me. She had a few drinks and we're in the back of the club where the bathroom are, and we are making out like we are fucking 15 year old teenagers. You know what I mean? I got her slammed against the wall. We're going to town while the other comedians are doing their thing. Well, this dude and his girlfriend got up from the show, went back to the restroom and saw us make, saw us making out. I didn't know this. I, you know, I was high. I was having a good ass time and I had crushed. So like it was all a good night. About four or five months later, I run into a guy at a place where I'm giving a speech and I'm in the bathroom and he goes, Hey, didn't you do some stand up comedy in Vegas? And I'm like, yeah, I did. He goes, that's pretty fucked up, bro. And I'm like, what? He goes, 
I heard you up there talking about your wife, my girlfriend. We heard you up there. And then we were in the back of the club and we see you making out with this young chick in the back. Like you guys are like just fucking making out like crazy. I said, hold on a second. I pull up my phone. I pull up a picture of my wife. I go, does she look like that? He goes, yeah, bro. I go, that's my wife, bro. That's my fucking wife. And he goes, all right, sign me up for your club, dude. Because this <laughs> clearly, this must clearly work, man. So that's my favorite story because it's happening in the wild. Like we go out with clubbing with people and just have a good time. Uh, it just happened in Arizona, man. A couple of guys that were out with us. I was out with my buddy, John Madsen and, and a bunch of uh, guys that are in his community. And we're out dancing, having a good ass time. And two guys that were in the community said, here's my credit card, dude. Whatever the fuck you guys have, I want that in my marriage. And they had decent good marriages. They want great. And their eyes were open to, oh, this is a whole new experience that this guy is showing us. And so, dude, not only am I walking my genius and sharing this, but it just feels like just living this relationship and truly exemplifying what's possible between two people who are willing to go, you know what? We want to crack this code of connection and, uh, and it's been powerful. And it's that player dial that taking that wild Philly back. But Jesse and I, we love going dancing. We love that shit. Why would we stop just because we become parents and because we're together? No, man, this, we want to, we want to launch to the moon together. Yeah. Not, not reality, but you know what I'm saying? No, you can though soon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not signing up for that fucking trip until they've had like a hundred thousand people go up. And back and back and yeah. Fuck that dude. I, I am waiting. I'm waiting till something happens, you know, and then, then I'll go, you know, cause always the first round of shit never really works out. You know, I, dude, so this place on like, earth I haven't been that I want to go. Fuck the moon. That place looks boring and dull as shit, dude. What's up there? You got fucking good waves up there? Fuck you, dude. I don't, Mars? What the fuck are you Mars? I don't give a shit about any of that stuff, dude. Oh, thank you. You can buy that and sell that yourself. I'm not interested. All right, let's get to the fifth dial, shall we? Yep. All right. Fifth dial, and this is the one that really brings these home. And without this, you're fucked. You can do these other four things and still not create the ultimate attraction if you don't do this fifth dial. And the fifth dial is the power dial. The power dial is you standing as an empowered man. And the energy behind this dial is become the most attractive version of you for you. You've got to do this for you. You've got to. I don't do dishes or take out the trash or pick up my dog's shit or any of that. And I don't really do dishes and picking up the, tr the, the, the shit isn't my, in my fucking on my chore list, as it were for my lane in my house. Sometimes I'll do it, but I don't do anything around the house hoping to get laid. I do it because that's my standard. A good dude would do this and everything I show up and everything I do in my life is I'm a good dad because I want to be a good dad. Not so no, I'm not looking for brownie points. What, am I, what are we fucking talking about here, dude? I'm not at a bake sale. I don't need brownie points. I want my wife to fucking have her heart just beat and go. I'm so honored to be with that dude. But most men give up their power. They sell it for too little and they sell it too soon. And it, we call it falling into the mom matrix. The mom matrix is looking for your wife's validation. You are, you have to get your validation. If she rejects you in sex, you become a pouty little bitch and a passive aggressive ding dong. You, uh, it, it, dude, you're afraid. We call it editing and auditing your shine, meaning you're not really who you truly are. You edit who you are around your wife so that you don't upset the apple cart because she's only throwing you a crumb of pussy once a month anyway. And if you do anything bad that week, shit, you're not even getting that. And man, you want that so bad. And you just, they're just so fucking desperate. And most men don't know how to get out of that. They literally don't know how to get out of, hey, I want something from her. She won't give it to me. How the fuck do I get it? This is the prison that most men live in, in modern America, modern, well, modern civilization, period. Most of this has happened. And so the only way to get out of that prison, A, is you hold the key and B, you've got to create desire for somebody to want to be with you. And that's the biggest crux. And that's why my message offers so much hope is like, dude, you can create what you want if you're willing to create it. It might take some time, but it usually happens way faster than anybody believes. And let me give you one analogy to show how quick this can happen because it's an energy thing. I believe it's an energy thing the entire time. You either have taker energy or you have giver energy. And 
if you have two magnets, but they're like, they're not the right way, they push away from each other. No matter how close you get, they eventually just keep pushing away. But all you do is flip one and then shloom, it like immediately attracts. It doesn't take a long time. They don't go, okay, I think we're supposed to think, okay, and boom. It's just very, very fast. And it's when that energy switches and it's this, this is that power dial where it really, truly makes a woman start to lust after a man. And here's how it works. There's two ways it works. Number one, most men say their word is their bond. I call bullshit because most men actually don't do what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it without fault. It shows up in every area of their life. They're going to finally start to eat healthy. They're going to finally start to lift weights. They're going to finally start to go to the gym. They're going to finally start that business, grow that business, scale that business, whatever, sell that business. They're, they're going to finally, they're going to finally, they're going to finally, and their wife watches them go, you don't ever follow through anything you say. I asked you to hold the, hang the fucking painting a month ago, and you said, yeah, 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 and you still don't do it. You tell me you're going to take our daughter on this date from this time to this time and you show up really fucking late and you've got an excuse because you're at the office and something ran late. There's always an excuse. And so what happens is the trust goes down. It has nothing to do with cheating or infidelity. It has to do, can they bank on your word? And when the trust goes down, the lust goes down. And so she starts to resent this guy and goes, I can't trust anything this motherfucker says. He doesn't do really what he says he's going to do when he says he's going to do it without fault. Obviously, we're human, so it's gonna, you're going to make some mistakes. But most people just go, well, I'm human, so I can get lazy. No, 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 no. It's, she's watching your word. And so to stand in your power, you have to do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. Not for her, not for anybody else, but for yourself, for yourself. And then the second way to do this is she, when you start to become this new guy, every wife gives a little bit of pushback or a little bit of resistance. Reason for that is she has to test, is this really the new you or did you just read something off page 43 of a book somewhere and you're trying to get some ass? And so she will test subconsciously, sometimes consciously. And most guys, if they fail this test, she goes, ah, he's a pussy. I knew it. He was just trying to get something. But if you pass the test, because people only test what they want to trust, you were to sit down in a chair and it fell apart and you fell on your ass. You'd be really reluctant to sit in that chair again. Even if I was to go put it back together, put a little bit of duct tape on it, you wouldn't just sit back down. You would test the chair to see if it actually will hold you up. She's testing to see, are you? can I really rely on you? Can I really rely on you? When you pass the test, she goes, you pass the test. That's when the trust goes up. And when the trust goes up, the lust goes up. And it can happen like that. 75% uh, of the guys that have gone through our program notice that between day seven and 11, there's a ma major, major energy shift. And that's because they decided to shift the energy. It doesn't have to do. I don't even give a shit about what your wife says or does or anything. We don't even talk. About, that's not, she's not involved in this. It's you. You become the most attractive version of you. And guess what? If she doesn't want you at that point and your best point, you if she doesn't want you, when you become the most attractive version of you, why the fuck would you let her ride shotgun in your life? Right. Right. Facts. So this is why this fucking thing works. And guys have come to our program and end up getting a divorce. And they go, dude, I'm so glad I went through married game. I'm not married anymore. But holy shit, Keith reminded me of who I am. Now, it doesn't mean you go for 90 days, you're perfect. And then you go, hey, fuck you. I got a guy here. I think there's room for grace. And I think that she probably is going to struggle with some PTSD from you being a dick, dickhead, all that. But when it boils, really boils right down to it, Tyson, it's like, bro, you dial these five dials in and you become what we call a provocateur, a man who provokes his wife. And if she doesn't, if she's not provoked with you, then at that point, you can make an empowered decision. Do I want to be with somebody? who doesn't see me, hear me, understand me, or give a shit about me. If that's the case, well, then you can make an empowered decision rather than just a desperate and disempowered decision. And that's what I'm aiming to do. And that's what my whole entire goal is, is sharing and helping guys realize, dude, there's so much hope. There's so much empowerment. 80% of divorces do not have to happen. They're just because guys don't understand what the fuck's going on. It's why women file divorce because they're just, they're so heartbroken. They're sad. They're rooting for these men and they want a man who gets it. But most men don't get it because a lot of this shit I'm talking to you, about, it seems counterintuitive at first, especially in how you're having to get it. So 
That's the married game, bro. And uh, I, I love it, man. You know, it's just like you had referenced, man. It's it's more so an internal game with the male or the person because you know our outside or external world is solely based on you know what we perceive and believe in ourselves. And if we change that, dude, the game changes, right? Yeah, that's exactly right, man. So here we stand. And guys have a crossroads, and that's real simple. Do, 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 if you want to stay the same, then don't do anything different. And you can complain about it and be a little pussy about it and, and make it everybody else's problem. Or you can stand up and go, you know, fuck this, dude. You know what? My family deserves the best version of me. I deserve the best version of me. Why, why have I settled for not being the best version of me, the most optimized version of me, the ideal version of me? However you want to describe it. It's any of those things. And it's like, you know what? When are you gonna when are you gonna finally say enough's enough? When are you gonna finally say, you know what, I'm I'm done. I'm done with the excuses. I'm gonna go fix this and I'm gonna become the best version of me. I love it, man. Bro, this leads us. Thank you so much for dropping the gems, man. Uh, this leads us into our final segment of the show. It is called <laughs> Speed dating questions. These speed dating right. questions are brought to you by conversationstarterworld.com. Rapid fire questions, man. If life were a video game, what would be some of the cheat codes that you would use? Dude, I would pick Bo Jackson and Marcus Allen on Tech Mobile and fucking run half back around the wing and fucking win the game. That's what I would pick. <laughs> Let's go, man. What's amazing. your favorite? Pick the right guy. Go ahead. What's yep. that? Yep. Yep. What's your favorite car? Uh, I'm having it built and delivered the next 30 days. That's custom built for me. My The guy who's building is on uh, Netflix, Rust to Riches, a 1956 F100. Sick. And um, it's it, he said it'll be the best truck in the country. And I, I, I think he's probably right because I know what we ordered. And I'm, I'm very excited. I can't wait to take delivery in the next 30 days. Sick, man. Send me a pic when you get it, man. hundred percent, man. That thing looks so rad. Oh, it's going to be epic. The most epic thing ever. What's your favorite uh, breakfast food? Uh, what I normally eat, uh, I, I really like the like the, an egg, an omelet, an omelet of some sort. Awesome. Uh, what is what is uh, the best book you've read recently? This one right behind me, by, written by one of my best friends called Buy Back Your Time by Dan Martell. Actually, it's shifted my way of seeing life probably more, maybe more so than any of the book I've ever read. And he happens That's to be one of my best friends for the last six years. I've watched him live everything he's talking about in that book, and it's 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 absolutely groundbreaking. I'm going to pop that in my Amazon cart today. Yeah, I think yeah. I've seen you post about it before, too. It's, 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 it's the ne most next level thing ever. And when you read it, you go, Fuck. okay, I got it. Yeah, because I think entrepreneurs have it backwards, you know, like we got in this game to free up time, you know, and with that comes money and then, you know, happiness ultimately. Uh, last question, man. What's your idea of the perfect date? Mm. Uh, wow, I, I've got like six of them going through my head simultaneously. So, um anything that jesse and i are eating i'm make, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna just give some generalities that a lot of things can fit into this number one jesse and i are laughing our ass off yeah number two we are eating the best food created by the greatest chefs on planet earth number three we're either drinking espresso martinis or i'm gumming out of my fucking gourd high as fuck on thc sativa and uh that it, we, and then and then number four we're on an adventure doing something that we don't exactly know what the end's going to look like but we're sure as hell pumped we're together uh, and gonna see it together i absolutely love that man that made me freaking smile dude bro keith um can you tell everybody where they can find you across all the intranets and uh, how they can come and contact you more information about married game and yourself yeah, you bet. So um, to find out about everything I'm doing, whether it's Married Game, our podcast, my Ascend Brotherhood, or just about me and videos about what we do, if you go to keithyaki.com, it, it's all there for you. Uh, but if you want to interact with me like more like like 
actually like see my clips and stuff, Instagram is the best place for uh, right now for people to go at Keith Yaki on Instagram. Awesome. Awesome, man. Bro, thank you so much for hopping on. I really, really appreciate the insight, man. Really, really appreciate the connection, man. You're an awesome dude. We're going to roll out on the intro, all right? Sounds good. Thanks for having me on, man. Guys, thank you so much for rocking with me. Really, really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please go ahead and follow Keith Yaki. Also, if you like videos just like this somewhere on the screen, go ahead and click it uh, and you'll see more videos just like this one. As always, be kind. Rewind. Peace. Bro, thank you so much, man. It's an honor, man. Honor dude, for having me like, on. Dude, you are super... Um, you're a good dude, man. Your energy, um, your vibe, you're a good dude, man. I, I, I truly see what you're doing in, in the men's, in the men's space, in the relationship space. And, you know, the things that you've uh, shared on social have uh, helped my relationship personally. Um, just you know, diving into to more of these concepts, man, like it's, it's really helped turn some, some concepts of the relationship around, uh, with myself and my spouse, man. And, uh, you know, I'm looking to forward to implement some of these things that, that we talked about today, man. Hell yeah, bro. Where are you located? I'm uh, located in Vegas, man. Oh, you are in Vegas. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very yeah. Cool. yeah. 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 Um, and you're up in SoCal, right? Yeah. Right here. Laguna beach, Dana point area. Yeah. Awesome. Cause you, you lived in Vegas for a little bit, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't, I want to say like seven or eight years maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What made you pop up to SoCal? I grew up down here, man. So it was just like, I, 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 I really wanted to get back to surfing. And at one point it just, it like just hit me. What are you waiting for? Mm. And it was a clear distinction. Like, Hey, you can't, cause it, the question popped in my mind, like this is what happened. I said, man, I can't wait to move back to Southern California to surf again. And the, it, it, before I got the words out of my mind, it's like, what are you waiting for? I was like, oh yeah, yeah. what are you waiting for? So it, I, moving here changed my life. Yeah. There's so much serendipity that happened. I, I, some, some, whoever created this whole thing that's making all of us move and breathe and have our being, I, I think really led me here. And, and I can't, I, I, I'm living a dream, bro. And I, I'm just going to keep talking about the shit I'm talking about, the way I'm talking about. And I'm not changing it for nobody because it's what got me here. And everybody's asking me, man, tone down on this. So tone down on this. I'm like, you can go fucking tone yourself down. I'm not toning down shit. Yeah, man. You know, that's I, two things, man. Like first, like, thank you for sharing that. And then like, secondly, like people, like I have, I have people that help, you know, kind of put some of this stuff together and, and they say like, you know, tone down or, you know, not do this. And I'm just like, man, that's not like true, authentic to who I am. And it doesn't make me happy, you know? And, and I've identified that you've found happiness within you yeah. And then from there, that radiates with everybody in your sphere. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, if anybody got any takeaway from today or any of your message, you know, it's really just finding happiness within yourself and believing who the fuck you are. Yeah, man. And you know, what's so interesting is I've only got one concept that created that for me. And that is do what I say I'm going to do when I say I'm going to do it without, without fault. Like it's all boiled down to that one. Very, it's so damn simple that it's so simple to not listen to, but that's it. Like my, yeah. why my wife, like I, I give these talks all the time, you know, on stage or whatever. And, uh, my wife will be there and the people come on like, is, is any of this fucking shit real? Like is what he's saying? She goes, if it comes out of that man's mouth, if it comes out of that man's mouth, it has to be hundred percent true. He won't let it out. Like, and she's no, she's knows that. And you always haven't been like that, right? That was like I'm a lying sack of shit, like every other fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Like I, I've <laughs> I've lied and told stories and bullshitted my way through life, and I'm just like I was tired of it. it 
lying and bullshitting my way through life left me at for eight or 10 years at $2 million a year guy. That sounds great. Unless you know, you're the 1% of the 1% and your buddies like Dan Martell and these guys are doing 25, 50, my buddy Taylor doing 90 million a year. And they're not smarter. They're not brighter they're they're, 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 they're big ass fucking knuckleheads just like me. And I had to start to realize, okay, what, what is going on here? I'm actually more talented than these guys. I'm actually smarter than these guys in certain areas. W why am I stuck at this level? So that was for me, the wake up call. It's like, you're making a couple million dollars a year. You've been doing it forever. And, and yet it's like, what, what, what am I missing? It was discipline. And it was doing yep. what I say to do without fault that created the, I will never break my word to myself. I'd break my word to you long before I break it to myself. Wow. Most people will say it the other way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No way. I'm, I'm more important to myself in my life than you are to me in my life. Why the fuck would I, you know what I mean? Like why? And you should be more important to you in your life than I am in your life. It's like, I finally got to a point where I'm like, fucking thank God Keith Yaki's on our team. I've yeah. never been able to say that with truly in my heart, like truly in my heart. I, I we're, we're th this, this little man cave that I built here, there's double the size right behind that wall. And they asked me this morning, do you want it? And I don't necessarily need it right, right now, right now. But if I build it out, I know I can use it to create really cool live events, which I used to do a ton of, and I know how profitable they are. And it's like, I, I, I paused for a second. I was like, man, can I pull that off? Like, I got the cash to do it, but will it take away my focus and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, Hey, you got Keith Yaki on your team. Fucking ask him what to do. He knows what to fucking do. Go into that guy, figure out what that guy will tell you right on the inside and don't, don't fucking be afraid. So it's, it's, it's this interesting thing. And that's what I've actually found has caused me to be a leader and why people go, dude, I feel like a billionaire, like no shit. I, Cause I have guys that are worth a billion or damn near close coming to me and going, Keith, I got this situation in my relationship. And I realized that it was the same, like feel like if, if, if a billionaire comes in and talks at a business conference, we're all like, Hey, shut the fuck up. Let that guy talk. He's made more than all of us. You know, I, okay. You made a million. <laughs> shut up, dude. This guy fucking makes that every minute. Let's see what he fucking thinks about. I realized that that's how people are starting to view me when it comes to relationships. And it's a new realm I'm stepping into. And dude, it's kind of weird when you step into a room with Waylands and Garrett's and all these other guys. And when the question comes up about relationship, it all goes really quiet and every head turns to me. That's when I knew I, I was really, truly leading from who I really was because the men I look up to the most that if I talk to them about something else, I will shut the fuck up and listen. That's how they all started acting towards me. And then they also come in and act in telling me their problems. And I was able to share with them how to fix it. And it was like simple fucking fixes. And they're like, how did I not see that? I go, I don't know, dude. Somehow I've got x-ray vision on this shit and I'm leaning into it and I'm fucking riding this thing till the wheels come off. And I'm not unapologetic at all about it. I love. So it, this, is, this is the reemergence of fucking Keith Yaki, man. I'm watching dude, it just dope, like man. you are. It's dope. And yeah, I, hope dude, and it's inspiring. I hope it inspires you and all the other people to truly be like, I'm doing me the way I'm going to do me. It, it it does, man. You know, like your, your content and, and, and your being man, like it, it really, it, it really inspires me personally, man. You know, um, even this, this conversation too, you know, it's, it's like how to be a better version of me. And just like you said, like, why would anybody, uh, uh, why would I want anybody else on my team besides me? You know, and yeah. that's the type of mentality, like Michael Jordan is me, you know, I am the Michael Jordan. You are the Michael Jordan of you, you know, yeah. it's, it's sick. That's a mind oh. fuck dude. Like, to really like start to believe it. And I've had to fake my way like in like, no, 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 Keith, you're it. What do you think? Don't fucking matter what they think. It, they might have good opinions, but they're not the ones suffering with the consequences of what you do right now. Are you willing to take nth? I call it ownership to the nth degree, like to the farthest fucking degree. And dude, that is, it's scary. My heart just palpitated even saying that because there's areas in my life that I'm 
double downing on the nth degree on the shit that I know that I need to do. That's going to take me to the next level business wise. And it's the shit I've been avoiding. And it even gives me a little bit of fucking heart palpitations just telling you about it. But I know that I have to do it no matter how I feel. Cause learning a new language, doing anything is always awkward as fuck at the beginning. Yeah. So yeah, I just strapped that white belt right. on and fucking get on that mat and fucking get my ass kicked and, and not even really getting my ass kicked, just learning, just the, the awkwardness of learning and going, Oh, that's how it works. Why did I want yeah. to make it so complicated? I don't know. Probably because you were raised in a fucking society that wants you to be confused as shit. So you don't prosper. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's actually one of the things, man. Like, it's funny that you mentioned that. Cause I I've been dialing in my schedule more, you know, I have a lot of things going on and just dialing in the schedule more. And then also setting time to like prep for things in the like coming day or week. Uh, I've, I started implementing that and I'm like, wow, this is this, it's a small change, but that like changes my time availability my like stress levels, if you would, whatever, you know, anxiety, like it just yeah. changes and it's just a small tweak, you know, and and, and then it frees up point. time, you know, you took, you took control back in your life. You said, all right, I'm at the yeah. fucking cockpit. I got the joystick. I did decide where this goes, dude. I bet you, you feel so empowered and it's almost mm -hmm. like a new sense of authority. It's almost like you gave yourself a raise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not monetarily. Yeah. Even though it, that will always translate monetarily when you start, you're like saying, wait a second, I'm the fucking leader you guys are all looking to. And when mm -hmm. I say all oh, you guys, I'm talking about the 17 different personalities in my head. You know what I mean? Yeah, me fighting. too, man. <laughs> me too, bro. To the kid, to the dad, to the son, to the uncle, to the, all the fucking, uh, all of, all the, all the fucking team Keith Yaki in there is like, you're it, motherfucker. Are you going to lead us? Or are you going to be fucking led? What, what's it going to be? And it's scary to lead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You yeah. It's so that? funny that you said that. Yeah, I do. I do, man. You know, I, I do. Um, Cause leading is, is ownership and, and willingness to, to like go into fire. You know, my, my uh, Jennifer, my spouse, she, she says, uh, you know, being with me is, is like the 17 personalities, you know, cause there's a comedy side of me. I, I also enjoy comedy. I, I did a couple things that stand up out here in Vegas. Um, and, you know, then there's a business side of me and then there's uh, like a food side of me. There's a work, you know, and she's like, I'm dating like these 17 different people. And, uh, you know, what's super cool about uh, her is she always reinforces that like I I am like the shit, you know, like I can do it. And it's, it's interesting because when she says it, I'm like, okay, you know, and, and it's like, I get to switch that internal belief in me all the time that I am that, you know? So. Yeah. yeah man. Dude, listen, I, I, it's so fun to talk. A lot of these generalities on the five dials, uh, you know, it, the, the, the nuance of it is so fucking powerful. Like, like just, just you hear words differently and you catch words coming out of your mouth differently. When you're truly empowered, there's things that you would never say about yourself again. And I started to really audit and think through like, why did I say that? And rather than judge myself for feeling a certain way, I started getting really curious. It's why I, I talk about a lot of my insecurities and a lot of shit I've worked through. And a lot of guys go, fuck, I went through that too. I can't believe he just said that out loud. Holy shit. And it's all because I've been just hyper determined to be, turn my insecurities into securities. And I realized that exposure to them is what has caused expansion for me. And so yeah. it's just like, I'm, I'm headlong into fucking whatever it takes. I don't care how exposed I get. I know who I want to become and I'm willing to fucking do whatever it takes to become that. So it's, it's been a great journey. It's an honor to be on a show, uh, on your show. Yeah, thanks, man. yeah dude. It's been fun, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Bro, dude, let's uh, let's stay in contact, man. I'd love to drop in with you. I'll I'll shoot you an email after this, and I'll also have the team chop up a couple things, like a couple videos, cool. uh, yeah, vertical man. format, so you can use it. We won't put any subtitles I'll on it; it'll it. just be raw, and then you guys can can edit it. But uh, bro, dude, you thank you so much. Yeah, th you, thank you so much for hopping on, man. Appreciate you, bro. Um, you have a 
you have an awesome day and, and weekend, man. I really appreciate you, bro. All right, man. Sounds good, Tyson. Thanks. Take care.